the airplane going over right as I'm about to start filming. We live right by across the water from a naval air base. It can get pretty loud here where we live. And there's number two. It's afterburners. Oh my gosh, I have cobwebs on my ceiling. So welcome to week 11 of my pregnancy. It's my first pregnancy and it's twins. My husband and I are super excited to be welcoming two babies into the world. Uh, September is the due date, but twins always come early, so it could be as early as the middle of August. So not a lot uh, happened in week 11 as far as symptoms go. Um, I have not had uh, more than just a couple of episodes of being a little bit nauseous, which is so much nicer than how it was last week where I was flat on my back for days on end, uh, just completely knocked out from the nausea and everything that came with that. So I have been able to gain the weight back that I lost from all the vomiting that I did last week, so I'm very excited about that. And I'm feeling a lot more energized uh, it feels like the pregnancy symptoms have just sort of gone down a level. The fatigue, the nausea, the breast soreness, um, just everything that I had been experiencing seems to be at a lower level. Um, so I'm thankful for that because I've been able to get some more things done around the house and um, I've been more motivated to do some exercising which I wish I could have been doing it this entire time but just because of the symptoms and the bed rest that I've been on um, I haven't been able to so I am still technically on bed rest for one more week um, but I called my doctor and, and spoke with her she did a follow-up uh, phone call asking me about the symptoms that I was experiencing, if I was still experiencing any bleeding, um, and she just advised to do light bed rest, uh, just to take it easy basically and, and not push it too far. So um, that has been really nice. I feel more like myself. So um, I have this week and next week left of my first trimester, so at the end of 12 weeks is the end of the first trimester. Um, and so I'm hoping the second trimester is not as crazy roller coaster as the first trimester has been health-wise. Um, I'm hoping that I don't have any more bleeding scares or, or something that makes me worry. Um, but just recently I have received something that helps alleviate some of that worry and I'm so excited to share that with you. Um, I mentioned in last week's video for week 10 that I had ordered a fetal Doppler and I was super excited to get in the mail although I didn't really, I've never used one before, I've never had a friend who's had one so um, it was all very new and I had been going off of uh, other vloggers that I've seen on YouTube and, and the instructions that they gave um, and feedback that they gave about different brands and such. So I went ahead and I ordered one. It came in the mail a day early, which was super exciting. And my husband actually picked up the mail that day and he came in, he's like, this package says fetal something. I think this is the little harpy here. And so he brought it in and he just ripped open the package and started taking it out. I'm one of those people who likes to open it up, read the instruction manual, you know, start charging it, go from A to Z in the booklet before I go to A to Z, you know, with the actual device itself, but he just, nah, he wanted to get straight to it, so it was pretty funny. So he took it all apart, ripped it open, put it all together, and um, we gave it a try. And the first time I tried to find a heartbeat, I couldn't. And I wasn't too discouraged because I know, oh, this is the first time I've ever tried this. And um, I hadn't been experiencing any uh, symptoms that would make me question whether or not my babies are okay. So I really, I wasn't too concerned. I was bummed 
because I see these videos of these gals finding their baby's heartbeat and it's just so cool, it's so precious and I wanted to experience that and it didn't happen the first time. So, um, and then, you know, I, I tried for maybe five, six minutes, couldn't find anything. I, I put the gel all over the um, uterine region. Um, you know, and our babies this week, week 11, they're the size of figs. They say they're like an inch and a half long. Um, so that's still pretty small to, you know, find their exact location and they can hide. So I was okay with the fact that the first time I, I couldn't find it. The second time I tried, however, um, my bladder was more full. I was more relaxed. Um, I was I had more patient attitude about it, and I had just had this feeling that they were on the left side of my belly, um, just because I feel a heaviness there. Whenever I think I feel the baby, it's always in that left lower region. So I said I'm just gonna focus on that area because I have a feeling that one or both of them are there. Um, and so I did, and I ended up finding a heartbeat, and it was super exciting, and it was so awesome and just adorable. And actually, Weston and I have never heard the heartbeats. We've only seen them on the ultrasound monitor. So it was special to be able to do that together, just, you know, sitting on my couch at home after dinner um, using this little device. It's called, it's Face Lake brand, which when I, um, when I ordered it, it said, Angel Sounds brand, but the model number is JPD100B, and I will post a link to this in the description of this video and the place where I got it. Um, I feel like it is uh, a really good, simple tool to have, even though I may not know how to use it altogether correctly. Um, I do feel like it is effective. Um, because now I can, it only takes me a couple of minutes at the most to find a heartbeat. Um, and I know I have two babies and I feel like on a couple of occasions I have found two separate heartbeats because they were in slightly different spots. They said, okay, if you have a fetal Doppler and you have twins and you are looking for a heartbeat, if you find one, let that be enough. Don't try to find two because you will never know if it's separate or not. So they and they say that if one is healthy, usually the other one is healthy. So when you find one heartbeat, just you know let that be your peace of mind. You've it's as if you have found two, uh, especially if I'm not having any symptoms that would indicate some sort of a, a miscarriage problem. So um, and I'm okay with that. So if I can find a heartbeat and listen to it. I feel so excited for the rest of the day. In my research um, and speaking with my doctor, uh, because this device is FDA approved um, and it uses such a low frequency, uh, they're not affected by it. Um, they they may feel the pressure, they may hear some noise, but it doesn't it doesn't hurt them at all, and it it doesn't damage them by any means. So I love this thing. I am super excited about it. I took it to my parents' house and showed it to my mom and my siblings, um, just to share it with them, and they were super excited to hear the baby. It was pretty cool, and um, I'm glad I'm not just renting it. I did purchase it. It was only forty five dollars. Um, it was through an eBay store, which actually goes through a another store. Um, but I'll have it forever and it's rechargeable so um, I don't have to replace the batteries in it I just plug it in and it recharges itself I'm happy with it I'm very happy that I can anytime I want just find those heartbeats and get that peace of mind and um, the Bible says you knit me in my mother's womb and it's just such an incredible thing to be the mother that is having something knit into her womb but it just it feels like such a privilege and I want to participate in that privilege as much as possible. I know that, um, you know, being healthy and taking my prenatal vitamins and, you know, all that, it helps. But ultimately, God is the one that's in control of the formation of these babies. Um, so any chance I get to participate in that, um, even if it doesn't really make that much of a difference, just mentally and emotionally for me is really nice. It's really nice for me to be able to go in and hear a heartbeat and 
just thank the Lord that everything's okay, that my baby's growing and the blood is pumping through their veins and um, that my body is nourishing this, uh, these humans. It's just crazy. It's, it's a privilege and I'm super excited to be their mom. It's gonna be awesome. So now I'm gonna show you a video of me using the fetal Doppler. Uh, just a little short tutorial. Um, so if you are wondering how to use this type of fetal Doppler, uh, you will have some information. And just, again, if this is the first time using it, even the first 15 times, you may not be able to find a fetal heartbeat, especially if you're as early on in your pregnancy as I am. All right, so I am just gonna give you a little tutorial on how to use a fetal Doppler. This is how I use my fetal Doppler. Uh, you're gonna need three things. First of all, a nice towel that you can tuck into the um, waistline of your pants when you unbutton and unzip a little ways. But it's just to make sure that there's not much of a mess. Second of all, you need a, some gel. This is just the little tube that came in the package with my fetal Doppler. Um, so I'm gonna use this, but you can also use aloe vera gel, which uh, I need to get a bottle of because this is almost out. And then, of course, you need your fetal Doppler. Mine is the JPD100B by Facelake. It has um, a probe that is three megahertz, and then it's a uh, monitor. You can turn it on. It has a display. It will tell you beats per minute if the heartbeat is strong enough. First thing you wanna do is, again, get that towel into the top of the waistline of your pants. And you want to find a spot between uh, your belly button and your pubic bone. Um, I would, if you are under 12 weeks pregnant, I would go a lot farther down than you think because that's just where the baby or babies um, are. Um, they are rarely higher than you think. Um, just in the research that I have done um, and the other people that I have talked to who have had experience with a fetal Doppler. So um, next you're gonna wanna put a generous amount of gel onto uh, your abdomen, um, but I don't need to put as much because I know the position where my babies are on me, so I don't need to do a full spread on my stomach. Um, I put a little bit of gel on my abdomen, and then I spread it around before I turn on my Doppler because it's just so loud and screechy. Um, so I'm just gonna spread it around a little bit, get it on the probe, um, and get a nice layer in the area that I'm gonna start searching for the heartbeat, and then I'm gonna turn it on. Turn it up a bit. Normally I keep it quiet, but I want you guys to be able to hear. So this is what my heartbeat sounds like. Here is the artery passing right um, on the outside of my uterus. And the baby moved. <laughs> Two babies that I don't know which is which. And I suppose I won't know until one's on one side and one's on the other side and I can listen to them, but then I'll also be able to feel them move really strongly. Um, and so this fetal Doppler is just, it's good for what it's good for. And that's finding a heartbeat when you want to. Um, of course, I have to say I'm not a doctor, so the instructions I just gave, um, are, are not to be taken more seriously than a doctor's instructions. Um, I, yeah, I don't claim any sort of medical knowledge. This is just me at home showing you how I do it. Um, and maybe it'll shed some light on an easier way to do it for you guys. So thank you so much for watching and check back next week for week 12, the last week of my first trimester. And like this video and subscribe to our channel, Nat and Wes and the rest. And we will give you updates on my pregnancy and our daily lives and just everything that's going on in this crazy adventure. Thank you for watching.